Welcome everyone! Flutter is well known for its animation functionalities, and even if many widgets make things easier, I really think that understanding the core fundamentals is a must-have for any front-end developer before using the most abstracted tools. Today, I'll give you a quick tour of the animation, curve, twin, animation controller, animated widget, and value listenable builder. Let's go! Before digging into the code, let's start by the beginning. What does characterize a visual animation? In fact, an animation just consists in updating several visual properties during a period of time. And this period of time can be represented as a double value that grows from 0 to 1. A status can also be associated with this notion of time to describe its current behavior, dismissed when not yet started, forward when running, and completed at the end of the animation. When the animation is running backwards, its status is reverse instead of forward. The animation object in Flutter is a mutable listenable object that stores the current time value and its status. Since the object is a listenable, it can be observed to update visuals consequently. Also note that the animation object takes a type parameter, which means that its value can be of any type and not only double. We will see why it's useful later, but anyway, our base animation is then an animation of double. Before going to visuals, it's necessary to mention first the curve object. Since the notion of time is represented as a double value, it's quite easy to transform it to a mathematical calculation. For example, instead of using the original time value, if we take the power of three computed value, then the animation is accelerated progressively instead of being linear. A curve is nothing more than this type of function, and it's a great opportunity to make your animations more natural. Curves are also often represented as a graph with time on the x-axis and the result of the transform on the y-axis. Flutter has a lot of built-in curves available from the curves class, like the isInOut cubic function that accelerates at the beginning and decelerates at the end. This kind of curve can add a lot of life to your animations. The curve official documentation describes all of them really well in case you want to compare them and choose one for your use case. Those curves are really simple, but they can be very powerful and can even help you to orchestrate your animations. One of the most useful curves must be the interval, which goes from 0 to 1 between two given time values. Here, our animation is starting at the half of the original time and ends before the end of the original time. And since curves are just functions, it is totally possible to chain them together, like applying the isInOut curve to the result of the interval curve. Fortunately, Flutter provides an object to apply a curve function to an existing animation of double, the curved animation. This animation wraps its parent animation and applies the given curve to its value. And since it is an animation of double itself, it can be used in place of the original animation. It is also an easy way to combine curves. Note that the interval curve has a curve parameter since it's a common pattern.
Now that we have a clear understanding of how the notion of time is represented and manipulated, we can finally convert it to visual properties. Basically, we will transform this value between 0 and 1 to a size, an offset, a color, and much more. Fortunately, Flutter offers us many functions to help. The linear interpolation functions provide the most basic way to interpolate the in-between values from a beginning value to an end value for a given type. They are generally available as a static method named lerp from many of the built-in types. For example, the size lerp function here calculates the value corresponding to the current time value. But almost any Flutter basic type has a lerp function, like the color type, for example. Or even more complex types like text style. So make sure to check if an implementation exists before doing your own. To simplify lerp in the animation context, the framework also provides a set of twin objects. Twin objects take begin and end values and just use the lerp function under the hood. Having them as objects make them endure, reusable, but they also add useful methods like animate that makes it possible to convert your time double animation to an animation of the twin type. This means that the resulting typed animation's value is automatically interpolated and updated. Just a useful and great shortcut. From the beginning, I'm talking about time represented as a double value. But how could we update this value for real during a real period of time? An animation controller is exactly that, a regular animation of double that can animate its value from 0 to 1 for a given duration and with various methods to control the animation. However, in order for your animation controller to synchronize itself with the render frames of the application, you must also provide a ticker provider to its vSync property. Animation controllers are generally instantiated from stateful widgets. And Flutter has a mixing for states to help you implement the ticker provider class. So simply add the ticker provider state mixing to your state and pass the state your animation controller. Finally, don't forget to call dispose from your controller when the state is disposed to avoid any memory leak or further complications. There's a few ways to rebuild a widget each time the animation is updated, and we'll start with the animated widget. Implementing an animated widget is really similar to implementing a stateless widget. You just have an additional constructor parameter, the listenable animation. That's it. You can now use the animation value from the build method. And this build method is called each time the animation value changes. You can also use a value listenable builder to observe the animation with an inline builder callback. Let's summarize all of that in a quick example. We will create this animation. We have to animate the background color and border radius of a container widget. At the same time, its size also grows.
you may also notice septal rotation. An easing curve makes our animation more lively. And inside this container, we have a text for which letter spacing and color are updated. We will start by creating an animation controller from the state of a stateful widget. We add the single ticker provider state mixing to the state. And we can initialize our controller with the duration of 2 seconds. If you're not familiar with the late keyword, it's perfectly normal since it was introduced recently alongside with town new safety. I'll put a link to its documentation in the description. One more time, don't forget to dispose the controller since it is listenable. We will automatically loop the animation as soon as the widget is created by invoking the controller repeat method with the reverse parameter set to true from the init state method. This starts to animate the controller value from 0 to 1 during 2 seconds and then backwards from 1 to 0 during 2 more seconds and then it starts again until it is stopped or disposed. For the container, a twin will allow us to interpolate the box decoration from the animation time value. As a begin value, we give it a white color and border radius of 0 to have a white square. As the end value, we give the dark green color and a big border radius to create a circle shape. To start observing the animation, we will use the value listenable builder, which calls its builder callback each time the animation value changes. We give it the resulting animation from the twin and we use the decoration from the builder. We also give a fixed side to the container to start displaying something. That's cool since we have only one twin, but as we will need a couple more of them, we will create a dedicated animated widget implementation. So. We extract what we had before as an intro widget, which takes the animation as parameter. And which gives it to its super constructor. The build method is now invoked each time the animation value changes. Since the animated widget observes the animation, we don't need the value listenable builder anymore. Instead, we return the container directly and use the evaluate method from the twin to get the interpolated value. Now, we can also lerp the size value from 20 to 220 with the lerp double method. By adding a second twin dedicated to the transform matrix, we are able to add a discrete rotation and therefore more identity to our animation. We pass this interpolating matrix to the transform value of the container with a transform origin at the center of it. To add more life to our animation, 
we wrap the controller animation given to our animated widget with a curved animation. That's it, far better. Last detail, the animated text. And again, we will have a dedicated twin for the text style interpolation. We give specific begin and end letter spacing and color values. The dynamically styled text is displayed in the center of the container. And our animation is now complete. Fine! This quick introduction to animation is now finished. I hope you learned something. There's a lot more to cover, so feel free to study the more abstracted widgets, like the implicitly animated widgets, the twin builders, or the transitions. I may cover them in a new video very soon, as many other topics, so stay tuned, and if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. See you, goodbye!